and welcome to ARC Ministries inside the ARC to our Sunday service. Um, thank you to everyone who is here today and everyone who is watching on live stream. We're so glad that you can um, be here with us and just to be able to um, encounter the Lord even from your living room. So please, um, you know, share this with someone. I know that people um, watch this, you know, uh, during the week. So I just um, pray that that blesses you and that you receive from that. So today we'll be sharing, uh, Pastor Mandy will be sharing on Love the Finish. So um, we're just going to um, take it over to the worship team. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up. If you're at home, you can stand up too. <laughs> our voices to the Lord this morning. Amen. We just love you, Lord. We worship you. We welcome you here. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you'll have your way in this place, but you'll have your way through the live stream as well. We give you permission to come and move however you want to move this morning, Lord. We just yield ourselves to you, Lord. We thank you, worship angels. We just release you in the house of God. Lord, you said you teach us to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Higher than the mountains that I face. Strong. Thank you. 
is up Never runs out on me Your love never fails Never gives up Never runs out on me
peace of God this morning, amen. And I just want you just to breathe that peace in and whatever it is that's overwhelming you. And every one of us in life have things that are pressing or pressure. I just want you to release it to the Lord. Even as we sing this song, Good, Good Father, you know, He says, cast all you care upon me. Why? Because He cares for us. Because we're not anointed to carry that burden and He is, amen. He talks about the anointing be, being a burden-destroying, yoke-removing power of God. So I just want you just to allow Him. You, you may not feel anything. You may feel lighter. But I just really believe that we're just to give up whatever it is that we're carrying. And the Lord is just going to just remove that pressure and remove that anxiety. Sometimes we just have to separate the problem or what we're going through at the time from the pressure and the anxiety and the fear and the overwhelming fear of being out of control or whatever it is that we're facing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Do that at home, guys. There's no distance in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that you led us to the Father, Lord. That you, we, you are the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes to the Father but by you. Open up a door, Lord, for us to know the Father in all His glory. Jesus, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think. Jesus, who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who 
situations that they can't change in their in their nat- in the natural Lord there's nothing they can do about it but we're not looking to the natural this morning Lord we're looking to you a supernatural God hallelujah praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus love so Lord, we just thank you that you minister to us throughout this service, Lord. And it's not just through the worship, Lord, but it's every part, Lord, that we take this time to come and gather to exalt your name, to honour you, Lord. It's two hours out of our week. Is a week 168 hours? I'm not a mathematician. Where's Mandy Long? I think it is, but it's two hours out of our week, Lord. And we just want to give them fully to you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Morning. I just thought we had just begun. Where did that half an hour disappear? Seriously, I thought we were just in the first song. 
Anyway, blessing, guys. It'd be really nice to see you. It's just very bright. You guys are also shaded down there. Anyway, I just thought I'd just... Uh, oh, my favourite picture. Um, I just thought, can we just start with that first scripture? Thanks, Hannah. Is it hiding there? Lovely Hannah. I think Danielle's talking to Hannah. She's absorbed with Danielle. There it is. Is it there? Yeah. Isn't this a precious word? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. Amen. Hey, um, I just wonder, <laughs> do you mind if I be real for a second? Just, just be really, really real. And let's, let's bring this down to earth, shall we? Um, sometimes you look at a person like me and you go, he's got it all together. He was, he, since birth, he was born in togetherness. I mean, seriously, that's honestly how you can think sometimes. When you look at somebody, you just do not know where they've come from. Seriously, you can look at somebody and you think, you know, you just don't know where they were last week or where they have come from last year. So I just thought I might just touch a little bit, um, even just, I, I, let's just be real. My, I, I'm just going to go back into my history. So I was born in a family that didn't know how to be parents. My father was born, he was born out of wedlock and his, and his own mother, his own grandfather kicked mum and him out of the house and you're no longer a part of the house, fend for yourself. His own father then died in the Siberian war camps. My mum, her, her mum uh, abandoned her when she was four years old. And so, you know, we're, we're not all born in a perfect little home, are we? I mean, I look at faces here, and I do not know what your past was like. I do not know what you were, where you came from. But all I can say is, but for the blood of Jesus, that we are where we are. And, and we are just beginning, aren't we? We're just beginning. And the Lord has a wonderful, wonderful journey for us. Oh, but I, I also have to say, there was power, the power of God was in our family. I was just... My, young, my youngest brother was born with, with such a curvature in his spine that the doctors said he will never walk. He will be wheelbarrow bound, will bound. No. Wheelchair bound <laughs> for his whole life. But my mom said... The anointing in God's little pinky, the fingernail of his little pinky is enough to look after this. And so she didn't think another thought of it, just another thought of it. And so she's at the doctor's a week later and has, has Simon on his, on his knee, bouncing up, you know, back, back to the nurse. And the nurse come in, when she come in, she goes, oh, what happened? Between the last visit to now, the spine was dead straight. And so he went on to, to run in the Pan Pacific Games. There you go. So I just encourage you. <laughs> but, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. So I, I encourage you to receive the blood to yourself. Receive what, was, what has been done for you. And do not lose hope. The power of God, the little anointing, the anointing in his little fingernail, as mum says, is enough to address the, the needs of your life. And the Lord seriously wants to bring you from your brokenness. And I, and I have to honour you guys who are broken because the love of God is so seriously directed towards you. He has come for the broken and the lost. So you almost can go, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my brokenness because I am, I am who I am today because where you've taught me, where you've brought me out of. But He wants to lead you into an anointed life. 
I just have to say that. Your, your, your walk is not finished. You have just begun. Now, He just wants to lead you where you become like Him, walking in the power and the glory of God. I had a very funny thing that happened to me this morning. I woke up and I picked up my phone. So I thought, oh, I better start preparing for today. And there was a, there was a document on my, Word, on my Word program where you type into, and it was already open. And can we just flick to the next one? And it was called Biblical Mechanics. Ah, oh, well, where did this come from? So I'm reading through it and I go, gee, this is really interesting. Wow, it's really good. I wonder where it came from. And I really, I, literally, I scratched my head for a half an hour. It sounds like me. It looks like something I would have written, but I didn't write it. And so even when I, I emailed it to myself as backup, and then I thought, okay, I'll close off the document. It's sitting on my phone anyway, but it wasn't even saved. It wasn't even a document that was established on the phone. So I've been told by the Lord, let me share this one with you guys today. Biblical mechanisms. Okay, so let's call it like this. Let's rephrase that. Biblical mechanisms to walk an anointed life full of the power of the Holy Ghost. Shall we say that? All right. Simply love on the Lord. You guys can read that too. Enter the gates with thanksgiving. Enter the courts with praise. Look, even, even these bold points and these little dashes were in the document. But I, it was like perfect. It's almost like an angel didn't wait until I got up to type this. He just thought, gosh, he's sleeping in. Let me type it for him. Delight yourself in the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God. Praise and worship prayer and fasting, go into the secret place. And then the next one, sorry, there's three. And the next one, the next one. Abide under the shadow of the Lord. Sit at the feet of Jesus. Enter the rest of the Lord. Be still and know the Lord. Meditate day and night on His Word. Wait upon the Lord. Repent, i.e. turn your heart, your affections, your thought unto the Lord. Open the door so you can eat and drink in Him. Seek the face of God manifest. And then one last one. Go in and out and find pasture. Drink deeply of the new wine. Feast on the fatness of your house, the Lord's house. And like little infants at the breast, drink deeply of God's pure kindness. So recognize that the emblems that you are holding in your hand are representative and are reminders, aren't they? I'm provoking you in a memory or, or what was the blood shed for? And so it is not just for the remission of your sins. It is also that you can meet and dine with your heavenly father. And it is also that you can step into the realms of divine authority and anointing to put backs back into order. In Jesus' name. So bless you, Lord, and bless you guys. Please partake in Jesus' name. Bless you. Bless you, Kim. Hello. Thank you, Rick. That was beautiful. Hello. My name's Kim Smith, and I'm going to do the giving message today. Hello. Hello, everyone online. I'm going to share on giving, but when I think about giving, I always think about how God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus. He took all our sins upon Himself and He exchanged His life for ours so that we could be made completely free and live a victorious, overcoming life. Doesn't mean everything's going to be rosy, but He holds our hands and He walks us through each day. So when reflecting on giving, I also thought of the woman the story of the widow and the mites. This is found in Luke 21, verse 1 to 4. In the Passion Translation, it says, Jesus was in the temple, observing all the wealthy, wanting to be noticed as they come in with their offerings. He noticed a very poor widow, dropping two small copper coins into the offering box. Listen to me, he said. This poor widow has given a larger offering than any of the wealthy. For the rich only gave out of their surplus, but she sacrificed out of her poverty and gave to God all that she had to live on. When you have lots of money, it's very easy to give. But we, when you have lots of bills to pay and not much income, it's so much harder to give, isn't it? Because man looks at outside appearance, but God looks at the heart. The widow gave her all with her whole heart and a whole being. She gave with all of her might. 
She knew that God was her source and her supply and her ever-present help in time of need. I think that she would have been the type of widow that would come early and pray before the service for everyone. She'd be the type of person that would bake a lasagna when you've just moved house. I've just moved house. If anyone wants to bake a lasagna, bring it over. (laughs) She would also be the type of person that when someone had a newborn, she would go over, she would knit the booties or she'd hold the baby so that the mother could have a rest. Now we give our 10% tithe today because it's a spiritual principle, but we cannot outgive God. He gives seeds to the sower and returns to us sometimes 30, 60 and 100 fold increase on our sowing. I know in my own life that I have consistently given over many years and I can truly say that God constantly supplies all my needs and, co- and causes me to flourish abundantly. Finances are one area that God wants you to give, but He wants us also to give our time, our talent and our treasure, to use our spiritual gifts to outwork that in the community for His glory. So ask God today how much you should give financially and if there are other ways on top of that that you can give to others around you. At another church that I was at, I gave my tithe and then God said to me, I heard him clearly, thank you, Kim, but I'd like you to give a financial blessing to that lady in the back row. When I looked at her, her outside appearance, she looked like she was doing very well and that she wouldn't need any extra money. But when I gave her what God said, she cried and said that she had prayed to God that he would help her to pay a huge bill that she was going and struggling with at that time. But God answered that prayer. So be obedient to his voice and watch him do the miraculous through you. So giving is one side of a coin, but receiving is the other side. Today, receive God's love, his peace, his goodness and his joy, and then give to others out of the overflow of his unfailing love. It is a never ending perpetual stream of his goodness, his grace and his mercy, which will flow from your life and then it will flow out to others around you. So Father, thank you for this offering today. Thank you for every part of our family here at Ark and for those that are giving online. Lord, I just pray that you bless them abundantly. Lord, pressed down, shaken together, running over with the same measure that they've given out, it will be returned to them. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I would would like to introduce the most beautiful Pastor Mandy Long. She's going to share today. Good morning. Thanks, Kim. Good morning, good morning. I love testimonies, so already today we heard the one that Rick gave in the communion um, about the healing of his brother and then Kim's about being obedient to the voice of the Lord. So, amen. That was free. So today you may have seen the title. Um, I'm talking about Love the Finish, which is a code name for finishing well because that didn't sound very good. Um, So let's pray, shall we? Lord, Help me um, articulate what it is that's on your heart that you want to say to your people, Father. I thank you, Lord, that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And I thank you, Lord, um, that you would take us deeper and deeper on whatever it is that you want to say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So love the finish or finishing well. I'd been thinking about this for a couple of weeks. I had a client a couple of weeks ago and they were just telling me a story about how they had been washing their car before they came to see me. And um, they said that they did not enjoy washing the car but they loved the result. And when they said it, I was still listening to them but something on the inside went off in me about doing the work that we don't always love it but at the end... Often, 
it's really good. So we engaged in a conversation about that because I personally hate washing cars too. Um, however, back in the days when I used to iron, I used to quite like ironing. So ironing sort of got the same concept because you know you've got something all wrinkly but then you iron it and it looks awesome and you feel really great if you're one of those people who still iron because that's not me. But you get the picture. So whatever it is for you, a job or a task that you may not like, but you do like the end result. Amen? Think of that. So there's also things that we don't want to finish. Like, you know, if you're reading a really good book and you're really sad when it ends, or a movie, or if you're out with friends or dinner or, or whatever your thing is, there are times in life where we just wish that this could go on for a little bit longer. Yeah? So there's lots of things about finishing, but the thing is whether you believe in the cross uh, and, and its meaning, things are going to wrap up because we're not staying here forever. <laughs> so our physical body is not staying here for hundreds and hundreds of years. So regardless of whether you agree or don't agree with all the ways uh, along the path, um, we are going to be finishing up in our, in our physical body, but that's not sad, that's good. So um, here's, here's a question. What does it even mean to finish well? So what does that even mean? Because for each one of us in this room, it's going to mean something different. And I'm actually probably going to close with the same question and I'm going to add on to that. And do you even care? Like, do, Because here's the thing. Some people actually don't care about finishing well and that's not my business. That's okay. But I'm always about being aware and being able to make an informed choice. It's not for me, it's not so much about whether you want to finish well or not, but it's about knowing the consequences of both decisions. Amen? Informed choice. So what does it even mean to finish well? So in this context, I'm talking about finishing the race that Jesus has set out before us, finishing this walk, this Christian walk, this thing that we do every day in our everyday lives. I believe this, for me... Finishing well is a work of the heart. And out of that, all your actions come, however that looks. So I felt like the Lord was really smart because I feel like this is a really good topic on the back of the messages that we've had here for the last five or six weeks. So um, Pastor Dan's been doing a series on Transform Mind and my brother did a, a message the other week on why we gather. So I feel like we need both those things if we're going to finish well. So to finish well, you need a transformed mind because you're probably not going to finish all that great if you're back over here in heaps of unforgiveness and bitterness and all those unfun things. And you're probably not going to finish well if you're over here completely disconnected and isolated and not connected to the very design of the church which Jesus died for. So I feel like the message ties in with, with both of those. So when we talk about finishing well, there's a couple of um, fairly well-known scriptures, one being in 2 Timothy 4, and Paul writes this, I have fought an excellent fight. I have finished my full course and I've kept my heart full of faith. There's a crown of righteousness waiting in heaven for me and I know that my Lord will reward me on this day of righteous judgment. And this crown is not only waiting for me, but for all, A-double-L, -L, who love and long for his unveiling. So, in the beginning of that scripture, he said, I've kept my heart full of faith. There's a key to finishing well because we know that Paul finished well under very difficult circumstances. Amen? He stayed full of faith. So I was thinking about this for me. I don't want to be that person who finishes well by clinging on. You know, and you sort of get that picture in your mind and you're just sort of hanging on by your fingertips or something. That's what I was thinking of. But I also thought, if that turned out to be my best, that that would be okay. But what if I had a choice to change the outcome? What if I've got a choice to actually change the outcome? And I don't have to be the person who's just clinging on, waiting for this whole thing to be wrapped up. Amen? So you might know this better than me. This is not a really good topic for me. But um, a couple of people in the scriptures that finished well were Abraham, Joshua, Paul and Peter, so we can all agree with that. And a couple that didn't finish as strong would be Solomon and Gideon. Do you know they had all the potential but there were some things along their path of life that uh, they got caught up in. So we get to choose who we want to be in this race. And 
for many years I always hated the topic of choice because it just brought me so much um, turmoil in my mind. But as I've hopefully matured in age and in the things of the kingdom, I feel like choice is a privilege. It's a privilege. I still don't have to love it. I do not certainly have to love all the choices I make. But I feel like it's a relationship that you um, have with the Lord where he trusts you to make a choice in certain situations. And that, to me, I feel like is a privilege. So the other scripture that's well known in the finishing well and the race and the wrapping things up is in Hebrews 12. Um, This is in the message, this one. It says... Do you see what all this, this is Paul again, do you see what all this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all the veterans cheering us on. It means that we better get on with it, strip down, start running and never quit. I circle that and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race that we're in. Study how he did it. I circle that too study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed that exhilarating finish in and with God he could put up with anything along the way cross shame whatever and now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God when you find yourselves flagging in your faith go over that story again I circle that too go over that story again Item by item, that long litany of hostility he ploughed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. So the key points for me in that are never quit, study how he did it, and go over the story again and again. Amen? I actually love that scripture. So the key thing, one of the key things I really want to stay on today is study how he did it. What does that even mean? So in both those scriptures, faith's mentioned. So you have to have faith. And I also wrote here that Jesus was love manifested. He was love. He is love. He didn't just have love. He is love. So obviously faith and love are part of the process of finishing well. But the two that I was thinking of were these. To finish well, you need identity and maturity. That's what I felt the Holy Spirit say to me. It's very hard to finish well if you don't know who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, how the heck do you know where you're going? Like seriously, if you think about that from a natural point of view, if my husband didn't know that his job was a fire service technician, how would he know where to go to work? Like how do you actually know? If you don't know what your vision is, if you don't know who you are in your workplace, how can you do your job? So it's exactly the same. If you don't know who you are in the kingdom, how can you do your job? How can you run your race? Because how do you know where to go? That's how... That's how I feel like the Lord ministers to me. Anyway, so, excuse me, identity. So for Jesus, if we're looking at how he did it, if we're talking about studying how he did it, because I'm really practical, so I'm just going to be doing the practical tips. It won't be the theology study. So um, in the scriptures it said, when he was baptised, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. Yeah, that's every single one of us who's born again. I am his daughter with whom he is well pleased. Is that really hard to receive some days? A hundred percent on repeat. But when you've been in it long enough and you start to just keep taking it in and in and in, amen, it becomes who you are because you are already actually that person. I should reword that. You are actually already that person, but then you understand that is who you have become when you were born again. Is that right? That sounds right, doesn't it? I think so. I th- you should know. You're like my walking concordance. My brother and Paula are my walking concordances. Um, I am well pleased because uh, my son. Okay. Um, the other thing that he was strong in his identity was when everything culturally was screaming the opposite because he didn't fit. You know the story. Wrong place, wrong mother, wrong parents, wrong, wrong, ev- wrong everything. Okay. He didn't fit, but how come that didn't rock his identity? He still knew who he was. He was still able to do that whole thing I've just read about, walk this thing out even though he knew what was coming. He didn't lose sight of where he was going. He knew who he was. So I feel like for me what helps is the vision is built on the inside of me. So I've been at this 26 years. So let's hope that there's some vision built on the inside of me of things that I value. 
So for me, the things that I value of my calling and my destiny, and if you know me, then you know that this would be true, um, would be my family. So that is a very important thing to me and I feel like the call of God on my life to build strong family. After that, for me, it's the design of the kingdom and this church and this family. It's very important to me. I believe in the design of the local church. And then, of course, I have other things like hope. I believe in hope and being able to encourage whoever I can that there is always hope. Amen? So they're just things that are important to me. So really, this is about what's important to you. If you want to finish well and you want to know where you're going, what is important to you? Because it's very hard to finish well when you're going here and you think, oh, well, I'm called here and I'm called here and I'm called over here. And I don't mean to a physical church. I mean in your mind about where you think you're going. Where are you going to live? What do I do for a job? Who am I going to choose for a partner? You know, whatever our life choices are. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't change. You know, God's God. But for in the season that you're in, you need to know where you're going. Amen? So um, I wrote that many occasions that I can directly tie my backward steps and terrible choices in life when I forgot who I was. Many, many times. Not just when I was walking out the eating disorder, but also just in life. I can physically tag decisions that I've made because if I was a daughter who he said, I'm well pleased with you, Mandy, I would never have made those decisions. You know, relationship choices and just dodgy decisions full stop because I keep forgetting who I am. And I've talked about this before about dividing culture. If you hang around with the wrong things, you won't need any help to forget who you are. It just is washed out of you. Let's not go there. So let's stay on something happy, 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 happy. Um, So that thing about believing, um, you know, my identity, that thing about it's okay for everyone else except for someone like me because not a daughter because you can be a daughter or son because that's okay because that's great for you but it wouldn't be okay for me. So those types of lies that just filter your whole lifestyle. So, um, So to hold fast to my identity... When we get that, I also need maturity. Because if you're immature, you're just going to be going backwards and forwards. Amen? So I think it's a little bit funny in the dictionary because one of the um, definitions of maturity is an adult. So, okay, so that means not a child, right? So the thing is this, that someone who's mature stays in the room and has hard conversations. And you mightn't like that. I don't like it either. But if you're going to be finishing well and you're going to know who you are, there has to be a level of maturity because otherwise you're going to be throwing a tantrum every time. I'm not saying don't throw a tantrum. I mean, some days are like that. But what I mean is don't throw a tantrum as a lifestyle because if God's trying to keep you on a path to finishing well and you're throwing a tantrum at him every time you, he gives you, an, gives you something and you don't like it, it's immaturity. Because I think it's this, th- and, and I'm not saying that that's not been me. I'm not saying it's still not me. I'm just talking about what has helped me. But it's immaturity to be throwing tantrums when God's trying to show us something or the people that are in our world are trying to teach us something. Yeah. Amen? Pretty hard to finish well if we're immature and um, don't know who we are. So part of that scripture that I highlighted was don't quit. So, um, and what I was thinking is that this happens right under our nose. And some of you might, I mean, as an internal thing, and we don't even realise. So one of the analogies that they use is, um, you know the story about the frog in the boiling water? You know that story? Apparently that's actually not true. (laughs) Apparently, (laughs) apparently the frog jumps out of the water. Now, look, I'm not a scientist, but they still use it for the analogy. So let's just stay with it. So the psychology of that is that things creep... Oh, so the story is, so better in case you don't know it. So the story is you put a, a frog in tepid water and uh, in a saucepan and you slowly turn up the heat. And the heat's just slowly turned up and up and up and the frog dies in the water because basically he hasn't noticed what's going on around him. So the analogy is that things just creep up, creep in, and then you've got a big mess. 
in his case, maybe dead. So not necessarily ours, but in our case, then we've got a mess to clean up because we weren't spiritually aware. Amen. So the thing with that is like um, the, the things that I talked about before, the messages, the transformed mind and the why we gather, they are guard posts, signposts, whatever you want to call it, to help us not be that frog in the boiling water. Those things are put in place to help us prevent different situations. Amen. So a current sign that I, that I have in my office is um, recovery is not a hobby. I quite like that. My husband came in the other day and he goes, but what if it is? I'm like, just don't do that. <laughs> just don't do that, babe. <laughs> do you know, like, but the truth is he was actually right because for some people it is a hobby because recovering from whatever it is that you might be recovering from whether it doesn't have to be some great big addiction, it could be um, a small family trauma or it could be something that isn't that huge to you but you're recovering from it. But for some people it is a hobby, in, out, part-time, sometimes. But if we're talking about finishing well, recovering from whatever we need to recover from can't be a hobby. It's got to be intentional. Amen? If this is what you want because remember I said you may not care about finishing well. And that could be okay too. So um, recovery is not a hobby. This is an intentional choice, just like receiving your identity and the outworking of maturity. So in the examples that I gave you in the beginning about the car washing and the ironing, here's the thing. You can physically see what you've done, yeah? But when the Lord is working in your heart, you mightn't see it for two years very easy to become discouraged isn't it you mightn't see it for five years what if you don't see it what if you move on still believing I don't know we have good examples of that in the scriptures but in any event sometimes because we are carnal in a lot of ways we want to see physical results straight away but we know that it's a walk of faith amen, amen. and we knew that when we got into it so when you're secure in your identity and mature in your actions, you understand that you don't have to know or see all things. That's a hard thing to understand, isn't it? Because then you've got the scriptures and you add in the part, just ask and you'll receive. Just ask and you'll know. It's just like, oh, really? And then, you'll, and then you've got to try and match that up. But I feel like that you can find peace in that when you can rest in your relationship with him. When you learn to trust him, you don't have to know everything. And I try to look at that from a natural point of view. See, I trust my husband. I do not have to know everything. I do not have to know why he does everything and how he does everything, do I? Like, that's a little bit dysfunctional. So sometimes I'm, I'm, I'd be really bad at it anyway, probably, trying to work out it out. But sometimes I feel like we transfer that onto God and we can become offended when we don't understand all the things. Amen. So offended, offended with God. So um, I've had a couple of um, health issues this year and I was thinking um, that a couple of my close friends um, gave me some scriptures and I was asking the Lord to me to, to what was going on. I'm like, what's going on? And, and I couldn't hear what he was saying. And anyway, they gave me some scriptures, a couple of different people. And like I was so encouraged by them, but... I wasn't able to make peace with it. I was just, I needed to hear what the Lord was saying. So I needed that encouragement to keep me on the path so that I could wait to hear what he was saying rather than fall into that disappointment. And then eventually he gave me one thing. He said, I'm going to make it okay. I'm just like, what? Like, it's not even a real scripture, God. But um, anyway, but here's the thing. When he said that, peace came. Peace just came. However, then I decided to have the conversation. Well, we've been here before and I know what you say when you're going to make it okay. It's not just like, good, it's okay the way I want it okay. It looks like this okay. So then we still sort of had that. But, but what I'm saying is that I needed the people and the spirit. Amen. This is how we do this. So, um, you know, if we're talking about physical things, uh, one of the things I had a virus and so nausea. And I remember the doctor saying to me that this is really good because when you've got a symptom, you know you've got a problem, you can figure it out. 
if you, if you can't see the symptoms or you can't feel the symptoms, pretty hard to work out what's going on, isn't it? So in the frog story, the frog didn't see the symptoms, didn't feel the symptoms, didn't hear the symptoms, I don't know, I don't know, whatever he did. In the analogy, he didn't see it coming. So symptoms, whether they be physical or emotional, are not always bad. They actually can be very healthy. So if you've got a symptom example, someone I was talking to uh, recently, I'm crying all the time and I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just, I've just been crying for two weeks. I'm like, okay, but is this necessarily bad and is something wrong? They've been doing a lot of grief work. It was actually amazing healing. It, there was a symptom and the symptom was crying and they automatically presumed I'm sad and this, but it was actually great because that crying and that sadness was just doing a really, really deep inner healing. So, but, um, and in that frog story, see those symptoms go unnoticed and then it doesn't end up very well. So what we're looking for are the symptoms that are personal to you. If there would be apathy or disappointment or offence or a broken relationship, and that's the whole thing. It's those little things that you may not think are very important grow very hard to finish well when you're carrying them. Because remember in that Hebrews 12, it says get rid of it. Toss, 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 because you're literally carrying it. Same thing. It's for you to um, work out what it was. So in that, that Hebrews 12 was the message. So this is just what... Just uh, verse 1 in the Passion, still in Hebrews 12, says it a little bit different. It says this. It says, So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the part that has been already marked out before us. And the part that I circled there was wound. So you let go of the wounds. And sometimes you don't know you're wounded if you ignore the symptoms. It's a word, physical or emotional or spiritual. Yeah? Wounds, wounds and wounds. I can feel like I'm going to be having a good message on that. Wounds, wounds and wounds. Say what again? I don't even remember what I said. Um, something, it was something good though, wasn't it? Um, I said that if you ignore the wounds, if you ignore the symptoms, um, physically, emotionally and spiritually, then you end up on a bad track. I don't know, you're going to have to listen. I forget. But it was something like that, wasn't it? It was good. I didn't write it down. God just give it to me then. But basically it was about if you ignore those symptoms, um, when, when God or your physical body is trying to give them to you, the outworking is not really good. Symptoms are not always bad. Anger is not always bad. What you do with it, hmm, that's negligible. You want to be careful and mature with, with your anger. But symptoms are not always bad. God's so smart. Do you know, he wants to tell us what's going on on the inside so we can finish strong. You know, particularly in COVID, haven't we seen so many crazy things? Just people drop out, just drop out of this whole thing. But those things didn't happen necessarily because of COVID. They'd already been here. The water was already heating, but then it just got a bit hotter and a bit hotter. And it's, you know, it's not easy. It does take maturity to stay in relationships and stay in hard conversations and, and do the things that we need to do to pursue healing. But back on wounds, 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 wounds. Wounds that we know that are there, it takes maturity to face them, and wounds that we don't know that are there. So we ask the Holy Spirit. Do I, is there something? Is this something? What if that crying for that person was just nothing? They were just sad. Okay. But what if it was something else and they, they were, it was okay and it was the healing and it was in this case and it was the grief and all those things. That's why we ask. Amen. Keep asking. If you don't hear, keep asking. You know how sometimes you have to ask your kids like 20 times to do something? Just keep asking. That's the whole thing about a relationship between a parent and a child. And as you mature and the relationships, the relationship grows, hopefully that you're able to hear better. Amen? Study how he did it. Study, study, study how he did it. I was thinking this. Jesus didn't have a therapist, did he? Don't say he did. He didn't, did he? 
No, that's right. He didn't talk about it anyway. Maybe he didn't want to tell us. No. I wrote here that he didn't have a therapist or healing room. So then how do we equate that to today? But he had people. See, he purposely built a team of people, his disciples, who he chose, didn't he? So amongst those people, I often joke about this in, in, a, in a non-funny way, I get paid to fill a gap in broken families because I 100% believe if you go back even one decade, so many of our issues were healed at the family table. I'm going to be saying this till I do go home to Jesus. So many issues were healed at the table. Auntie so-and-so, uncle so-and-so, the grandparents had the input. So much wisdom. I mean, who even had a therapist 100 years ago? Amen? So Jesus had built this whole family and this whole community um, around him. And the connection was often around the table, do you know? So um, I think that one of the things with that is if you think how you learn as a child, you start in kind well, you start at home with your family, but then you go to kindergarten. What happens at kindergarten? The people show you what to do. People show how do you learn to write? Your parents or your caregiver give you a pencil and you start to, to write. People invest in us to teach us things. Amen. So um, one of the one of the greatest things I think for me in walking out this thing is actually watching people not stalkerish, right? Like, I do not mean like that. I mean like just observing things in people that I value. So, and I have, I have plenty of examples, but, um, but one that always stands out to me was when Peter and I were first born again, um, we got invited to somebody's house after church and um, this is probably 25-ish years ago maybe. And our, we only had two kids then, they were little. And um, we went there after church for lunch. And I remember getting there and um, they had stopped and got chicken and chips on the way home. And I remember thinking, is this even allowed? And the table wasn't set and the invitation wasn't given a week before. And I guess I actually knew that you could do that, but I didn't know that. So... I always remember that. And, you know, that was one of the best lunches I ever had with the family. Our kids just played with their kids' Lego. I can remember quite a lot about it. And yet they did nothing. We had chicken and chips on just probably plates and not... not you, do you understand what I'm saying? It was about the feeling and the environment that they said. And this is where so much healing takings place. See, I've watched my pastors... Pastor Massey and Pastor Danielle turn up in this place pretty much every week for 20 years. Come on. It doesn't take much to figure that out. That equals faithful. Amen. You don't have to be stalking them and paying attention to what they do. You can see that's in their life. I have some other friends who have a child that's an addict uh, 20 years and I have just watched that family. There's a number of children in the family, all adults and grandchildren now. But I have just watched that family by close and by far sometimes just gather around that child. That child's not free yet. But I've just watched them love and love and love that child while they still had to parent the other children and grandchildren. Amen. See, things like that help me finish strong. Because there's that glimpse, see, if they can do it, then maybe I can do it. See if there's that tiny glimmer of hope because that's all God needs, doesn't he? So Christine Kane wrote something good this week. She said, um, it takes great resolve, courage and strength to remain faithful. Resolve, courage and strength. They're good words to remain faithful. And if you've been in this any length of time or in any long-term relationship or lived any of life, you know that you need those things just to do life, even without finishing his race. Amen. So um, I'm just going to close on, on these questions. So if we're talking about finishing well and love the finish, the question that I asked in the beginning was, what does it mean to you to finish well? What does it mean to you? Do you even care? Because it might be okay if you don't. Um, and if I do or don't care, why is that? So if I do care about finishing well, why do I care? And does my life reflect it? 
And if I don't care about finishing well, why would that be when all the scriptures and everything that we believe in and stand for and lay our life down for say the opposite? So on that really happy note... Um, I think we will, um, Deanne, yeah, that'd be great. Pastor Dan's going to close and then we can just have some time to maybe think about that. So what does it mean um, to finish well and is that important to me? Amen. Be blessed, fam. (laughs) Cheers. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're just going to say goodbye to our live streaming family. We just thank you for joining us. Those that haven't watched it yet, you'll watch it during the week sometime. Um, Still leave a comment down the bottom, interact with us. We love that. And if you can share this with somebody else, that was a good good message, amen, and an encouraging message. And we all need encouragement, amen. Encourage somebody this week, get around somebody. You know, sometimes we just have a thought go through our mind and we think about somebody and a scripture will rise up and then we just think, I'll do that later and we never get to do it. But you are the answer of God's prayers, amen. And every time you do something like that, you are answering a prayer from heaven. So I want to encourage you to do that. Even if that's you today, even if this morning you were sitting there and you were thinking about somebody else that could really benefit from hearing this message, share it with them. Amen. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye.